Welcome back, dear viewers, to another thought-provoking journey through the corridors of wisdom. In this exciting part 2 of Aristotle's Royal Pursuit of Wisdom, we dive even deeper into the profound teachings that shape the legendary conqueror, Alexander the Great. Join us as we unravel the timeless insights bestowed upon Alexander by his mentor and explore the world of philosophy that shaped the destiny of nations. Get ready for an intellectual adventure that will transport you to the heart of antiquity and reveal the hidden truths that influence the course of history. So, grab your metaphorical sword of knowledge and prepare to conquer the mysteries of the past. Welcome to Aristotle Royal Pursuit of Wisdom, Part 2. Let's embark on this quest together. War, an undeniable testament to human irrationality, still simmers within the hearts of individuals. It shall persist until we conquer our inherent selfishness. Armed with a multitude of innovations and destructive tools, civilization is destined to perpetuate its self-destructive conflicts throughout the ages. However, a looming dread now haunts the human psyche, a fear that eventually civilization will obliterate itself in a cataclysmic struggle. Consequently, there will be a need to stage the eternal drama of rebuilding. From the ashes of a civilization that perished with its idealism, some primordial society, still latent in the womb of destiny, must forge a new world. Anticipating this future, the sages of the ages have aspired to incorporate the most genuine and exquisite aspects of what has gone before into the foundation of this nascent world. It is a divine edict that the collective achievements of the past shall underpin each new order of things. The profound philosophical treasures of humanity must be preserved. The superficial may be allowed to perish, the fundamental and indispensable must endure, regardless of the cost. Platonists identified two fundamental forms of ignorance, simple and complex. Simple ignorance denotes a mere lack of knowledge and is shared by all entities that exist subsequent to the first cause, the only entity endowed with perfect knowledge. Simple ignorance is a perpetual stimulus, propelling the soul towards knowledge acquisition. The quest for awareness evolves from this state of initial ignorance, leading to an enhanced mental condition. The human intellect is invariably encompassed by existences beyond the grasp of its partly developed faculties. Within this realm of unfathomable phenomena lies an everlasting source of mental stimulation. Consequently, wisdom ultimately materializes from the rational pursuit of the enigmatic. In the ultimate analysis, only the ultimate cause can truly be deemed wise. In simpler terms, only God embodies goodness. Socrates asserted that knowledge, virtue, and utility are synonymous with the inherent nature of the good. Knowledge is a state of awareness, virtue is a state of being, and utility is a state of action. Considering wisdom as equivalent to intellectual completeness, it becomes evident that such a state can only exist within the whole, for anything less than the whole cannot possess the fullness of the all. No facet of creation is absolute, thus, each part is imperfect to the extent that it falls short of completeness. Where incompleteness resides, ignorance is likewise coexistent. Each part, while capable of comprehending its own self, cannot perceive the self in other parts. From a philosophical standpoint, human evolution involves a progression from heterogeneity to homogeneity. Over time, the segregated consciousness of individual fragments reunites to constitute the comprehensive consciousness of the whole. Only then does omniscience become a concrete reality. Thus, all beings are relatively ignorant yet relatively wise, comparatively inconsequential yet comparatively universal. The microscope discloses the significance of humanity, while the telescope reveals its insignificance. Throughout the eternities, man is progressively increasing in both wisdom and understanding. His ever-expanding consciousness encompasses more of the external world. Even in man's current state of imperfection, he is beginning to grasp that true happiness can only be attained through perfection. Among the faculties contributing to self-improvement, none rivals the rational intellect in significance. In the labyrinth of diversity, only an enlightened mind can, and must, guide the soul towards the radiant light of unity. In addition to simple ignorance, the most potent catalyst for mental growth, there exists a more perilous and elusive form, twofold or complex ignorance, which can be succinctly defined as ignorance of ignorance. Primitive civilizations worship the sun, moon, and stars, offering sacrifices to the winds, their crude fetishes attempts to appease enigmatic deities. They dwelt in a world brimming with wonders that eluded comprehension. Now great cities stand where once primitive tribes roamed, Humanity no longer perceives itself as primitive or indigenous. A spirit of wonder and awe has given way to one of sophistication. Modern man worships his own achievements, relegating the vastness of time and space to the background of consciousness or disregarding them entirely. 
the 20th century venerates civilization as if it were a deity, overwhelmed by its own creations. Its gods are of its own devising. Humanity has forgotten how minuscule, ephemeral, and uninformed it truly is. Ptolemy was ridiculed for envisioning Earth as the center of the universe, yet modern civilization appears founded on the hypothesis that Earth is the most permanent and significant celestial sphere. It presumes that the gods, from their celestial thrones, are captivated by the monumental and apocal events transpiring on this spherical anthill within the vast chaos. Throughout the ages, people tirelessly construct cities in a quest for dominion over them, as if a crown of gold or a legion of subjects could elevate them above the realm of their own thoughts. As this diminutive planet traverses its celestial path, it carries roughly 2 billion inhabitants who live and die, oblivious to the immeasurable expanse beyond their terrestrial abode. When measured against the infinite dimensions of time and space, what are the captains of industry or the lords of finance? Even if one of these plutocrats were to ascend to rule the earth itself, they would remain petty despots perched on a speck of cosmic dust. Philosophy unveils to humanity its kinship with the cosmos. It reveals that man is akin to the celestial bodies dotting the firmament. It elevates him from a mere denizen of a whirling atom to a citizen of the universe. It teaches that while humans are physically tethered to earth, of which their blood and bones are constituents, there exists within them a spiritual essence, a diviner self, through which they harmonize with the symphony of the all. Ignorance of ignorance, then, signifies an insular state of obliviousness in which man, cognizant only of the limited scope of his physical senses, haughtily asserts that nothing beyond this realm exists. Those who know only physical life are simply ignorant, but those who proclaim physical life as paramount, elevating it to the status of supreme reality, are ignorant of their own ignorance. If the infinite had not intended for man to attain wisdom, he would not have bestowed upon him the capacity for knowledge. If he had not intended for man to embrace virtue, he would not have sown the seeds of virtue within the human heart. If he had predetermined that man should be restricted to a narrow, physical existence, he would not have equipped him with senses capable of partially comprehending the vastness of the external universe. Philosophers call upon all of humanity to embrace a fellowship of the spirit, a fraternity of thought, and a congregation of selves. Philosophy beckons humanity away from the emptiness of selfishness, the despair of worldliness, the mockery of ambition, and the clutches of greed. It guides humanity away from the depths of hatred and the tomb of dead idealism. Philosophy aspires to lead all individuals into the broad, serene vistas of truth, for the realm of philosophy is a sanctuary of peace. In this realm, the finer qualities locked within each human soul find an avenue for expression. Here, people are taught to marvel at the intricacies of the natural world, every object, even a blade of grass, speaks and discloses its innermost nature. Bathed in the radiance of comprehension, all life becomes a magnificent and exquisite reality. Across the realms of creation, a mighty chorus of jubilation resonates, for in the light of philosophy, the purpose of existence is revealed, and the wisdom and goodness suffusing the entire cosmos become apparent, even to humanity's imperfect intellect. In this sanctuary, the yearning heart of mankind discovers a camaraderie that draws forth the abundant good concealed within the deepest recesses of the soul. Following the guidance of the wise, those who seek the truth eventually ascend to the summit of wisdom's peak. There, they gaze upon the panorama of life unfolding before them. The cities of the plains dwindle to mere specks, and the horizon in every direction is obscured by the enigmatic unknown. It is then that the soul comprehends that wisdom is rooted in the breadth of one's perspective, it expands in proportion to one's view. As the thoughts of man elevate him towards the heavens, individual streets fade into cities, cities into nations, nations into continents, continents into earth, earth into space, and space into an infinite eternity. Ultimately, only two entities endure, the self and the benevolence of God. While man's physical body coexists with him amidst the heedless masses, it is challenging to envision him truly inhabiting a world of his own, a world discovered by ascending into communion with the profound recesses of his inner nature. Man may lead two lives, one is a struggle from birth to death, measured by the creation of man, time. This life might be aptly described as an inattentive existence. The other life is a journey from realization to infinity, beginning with comprehension and lasting eternally, ultimately concluding in the plane of eternity. This is known as the philosophic life. Philosophers are not born, nor do they perish. Once they attain the realization of immortality, they become immortal. Once they have communed with their inner selves, they recognize that within them lies an immortal foundation that shall never fade. Upon this vibrant foundation, they construct a civilization that will outlast the sun, the moon, and the stars. 
Fools live only for today, philosophers live for eternity. Once rational consciousness transcends its mortal constraints, it is liberated from the shackles of mortality and will never die. There is no dissolution in this second or philosophic birth. This does not imply physical immortality, but rather that the philosopher has grasped that the physical body is not their true self any more than the physical earth is their true world. In the understanding that the form is perishable while life endures, conscious immortality is achieved. This was the immortality to which Socrates alluded when he declared, Anatus and Miletus may indeed put me to death, but they cannot harm me. To the wise, physical existence is merely the outer chamber of the hall of life. By swinging open the doors of this vestibule, the enlightened transition into a grander and more perfect existence. The ignorant reside within a world circumscribed by time and space. However, those who grasp the significance and dignity of being recognized that these are mere phantoms, illusions of the senses, arbitrary boundaries imposed by human ignorance upon the eternity of the divine. The philosopher lives and thrives in the realization of this eternity, for to them, this boundless span has been designed by the all-wise cause as the era of accomplishment. Man is not the insignificant being he may seem, his physical form is not the true measure of his authentic self. The hidden nature of man is as vast as his comprehension and as limitless as his thoughts. The fingers of his mind extend to touch the stars, and his spirit mingles with the pulsating life of the cosmos itself. He who has reached the state of understanding has heightened his capacity to know, gradually assimilating within himself the diverse elements of the universe. The unknown is simply what remains to be incorporated within the consciousness of the seeker. Philosophy assists man in cultivating an appreciation, for it not only reveals the splendor and sufficiency of knowledge but also unveils latent powers and faculties that empower man to fathom the secrets of the seven spheres. Through the ages, the mysteries have beckoned humanity to enter into their divine inheritance. The grand edifice of materiality has faltered. The spurious civilization fashioned by man has turned on him and, like Frankenstein's monster, threatens to consume its creator. Religion wanders aimlessly through theological conjecture, while science struggles against the barriers of the unknown. Only transcendental philosophy knows the way. Only the illumined reason can elevate the understanding part of man towards the light. Only philosophy can instruct man to be born well, live well, die well, and, to a significant extent, be reborn. Into this circle of the chosen, those who have chosen a life of knowledge, virtue, and utility, the philosophers throughout history extend their invitation to you. Thank you for joining us on this captivating exploration of Alexander's mentor and philosophy, part two. We hope you've gained fresh perspectives on the powerful influence of philosophy on one of history's most renowned figures. If you found this journey as enlightening as we did, don't forget to hit that like button, share this video with fellow seekers of wisdom, and subscribe to our channel for more captivating historical insights. Stay tuned for our next adventure into the annals of history, where we'll continue to uncover the secrets and stories that have shaped our world. From all of us here at Baldi's Thoughts, thank you for being a part of our journey through time. Until next time, keep seeking knowledge, and may wisdom guide your path.